Good day everyone! I am pre-service teacher Ninja and I am here to discuss about Product-Oriented Assessment. So what is Product-Oriented Assessment? Product-Oriented Assessment is an alternative form of assessment that moves away from traditional paper and pencil tests in which the actual student's performance is assessed through a product. So what are the examples of product-oriented assessment? The examples of product-oriented assessment are books like fables, cookbooks, stories, flip-flop books, accordion books, scrolled books, big books, cartoons, autobiographies, and biographies. Wall display like story train, collage, poster, ad, bulletin board, and exhibition. It can be also essay, computer game, board game, card game, projects, multimedia presentation, portfolios, and poster presentation. Now, how can we grade or assess product oriented? Assessment. We can assess product-oriented assessment through rubrics. So what is a rubric? A rubric is a scoring tool outlining required criteria for a piece of work or what is important to assess. It also indicates the rating that has been determined for each criterion based on its relative importance to the overall task and describes what the performance would look like at different quality levels. There are two types of rubric. One is holistic rubric and the other one is an analytic rubric. So what is a holistic rubric? A holistic rubric consists of a single scale with all criteria to be included in the evaluation being considered together. For example given clarity, organization, and mechanics. With a holistic rubric, the rater assigned a single score, usually in a 1 to 4 or 1 to 6 point scale, based on the overall judgment of the student work. The rater matches entire piece of student work to a single description on the scale. This is an example of a holistic rubric. As we can see, the scores 0 up to 5 have different corresponding descriptions. This will be the basis for grading a product-oriented assessment. On the other hand, an analytic rubric resembles a grid with the criteria for a student product listed in the leftmost column and with levels of performance listed across the top row, often using numbers and or descriptive tags. When scoring with an analytic rubric, each of the criteria is scored individually. The cells within the center of the rubric may be left blank or may contain descriptions of what the specified criteria look like for each level of performance. This is an example of an analytic rubric where criteria like organization, content knowledge, visuals, mechanics, and delivery have different descriptions and separate points to be filled by the assessor.
Good morning students! Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we will talk about another parasite named Ascaris lombricoides. So let's begin. So what is Ascaris lombricoides? Ascaris lombricoides is commonly known as roundworm. It is derived from the Latin word lombricoides which means earthworm. Because of the resemblance of roundworm to earthworm, it is named Ascaris lombricoides. It is the largest intestinal nematode of man. Humans are the only natural host and reservoir of infection. The disease caused by Ascaris lombricoides is known as Ascariasis. More than 1.4 billions of people are infected with Ascaris lombricoides, representing 25% of the world's population. It occurs at all ages, most common at children aging 2 to 10 years of age. Highest prevalence of Ascariasis are found in tropical countries where warm and wet climates supports the year-round transmission of infection. The majority of people with Ascariasis lives in Asia, which is 73%, Africa, 12%, and South America, 8%. The egg of Ascaris lumbricitis is round or oval, has thick brown shell, and has a rough surface. The difference between the fertilized egg and the unfertilized egg of Ascaris is that the unfertilized egg is larger and is elongated in shape. Then the adult worm. The adult worm resembles like an earthworm. It has elongated tapering to both ends, anterior is thinner than the posterior. The freshly excreted worm is yellowish in color and then gradually changes into white. Ascaris lumbricitis is sexually dimorphic, which means that it has a separate male and a separate female worm. The adult male measures 15 to 30 cm in length, 3 to 4 mm in diameter, and the tail is curved. The adult female measures 20 to 40 cm in length, and 2 to 6 mm in diameter, and the tail is straight. This is the life cycle of Ascaris lombricoides. Adult worms live in the lumen of the small intestine. A female worm may produce approximately 200,000 eggs per day. This is the diagnostic stage of Ascaris lombricoides. It is passed through the feces. Unfertilized eggs may be ingested but are not infective. Fertile eggs embryonate and become infective after 18 days to several weeks, depending on the environmental conditions. The embryonated egg with level 3 larva is swallowed and the larvae is hatched. This is the infective stage of Ascaris lombricoides. Hatch larvae enter circulation and migrate to lungs. Larvae are cuffed up and swallowed, re-entering gastrointestinal tract. Maturation proceeds in the small intestine. The mode of transmission of Ascariasis is fecal oral transmission. And there are two phases of Ascariasis. The first phase is the migrating larvae. The migrating larvae can cause allergic reactions, Ascaris pneumonia, which includes low-grade fever, dry cough, asthmatic wheezing, and eosinophilia. And it can also cause Leuffler syndrome. The phase 2 is the adult worm. Most worms in the small intestine produce trauma in the host tissue, block appendical lumen, and even small intestine. It can also affect nutritional status by rubbing the nutrition, causing malnutrition and growth retardation. Ascaris lumbricoides can be diagnosed through stool microscopy where eggs may be seen through direct examination of feces. can be also diagnosed through imaging 
where a large bundle of worms can be seen on the plain film of the abdomen. can be also diagnosed through ultrasound where single or bundle of worms can be seen and lastly, serology. Ascaris lumbricoides can be treated through these drugs. So number one is mebendazole. So mebendazole is the drug of choice. It can be taken orally, 1 mg twice a day for 3 days. Next is albendazole. It is given as a single dose, 400 mg. Next is evermictin. So evermictin, it causes paralysis to adult worms. Lastly is dalivamisole, which is taken orally, 150 mg for adults and 4 mg per kilograms for children. In order to prevent ascariasis, one must follow these steps. Number one is good sanitation. We must practice good sanitation at home. We must always make sure that the food and the water we take are coming from safe and clean places. Number two is educational programs. Educational programs must be given most especially to people who are still making stool as fertilizers. They must be educated to not use this tool because we don't know that this tool contains parasites that can cause disease. Next is mass treatment. Mass treatment of drugs like mebendazole and albendazole can help to prevent ascariasis. Next is improving personal hygiene. We must start cleanliness within ourselves. We must always wash our hands or put alcohols before we eat or take anything. And lastly is the proper disposal of escrita. We must properly dispose our escrita. We must defecate in our comfort rooms. To conclude, Ascaris lumbricoides or roundworm is indeed a threat to the health aspect of humanity. We must always remember that prevention is better than cure. You must always take note the preventive measure stated in order to prevent the spread of Ascaris lumbricoides or to prevent Ascaris lumbricoides parasite. That would be all for today's video. Thank you for listening and watching. See you on my next video. Bye! you already viewed an example of a product-oriented assessment, which is multimedia presentation, I am challenging you to comment below your grades basing on the rubric given. That ends my presentation, and thank you for watching. Again, this is Praise Service Teacher Joe. Thank you.